morning. Matt Johnson here, another episode of Deck Talk. We are now in the heat of the summer. In fact, it's about 6.30 in the morning, about 75 degrees. As you can see, no wind, humid, hot, high suns. It's going to be almost 90 today. We are in the heat of the summer. One of the more common questions I get, we just recently talked about rigging your soft plastics, then we talked about line choices. So we're getting to some of the meat and potatoes of what it takes to get out there on the water and what some of the tools you're going to use. Question I got quite regularly after two episodes ago and a couple after the last episode was deep summer fish or let's say summer bass summer walleyes whatever it might be what do you do in the summertime when these fish aren't as accessible in the shallows on slip bobbers whatever it might be what do you do to catch these fish we're going to touch on a variety of jigging presentations for deeper water applications everything from jig worms for bass to some of your walleye applications and those sorts of things focusing on the jig so this happens to be a jig worm in my hand. We're going to touch on that heavily for bass, talk about some of the options, ways to rig them, some of the combinations in terms of rod and reel setups, the line choices to get that desired action and the performance of the bait that you want to use. So like we said, we're going to talk about jig worms. What I like to start with oftentimes when I'm, a bat, when I'm bass fishing is once that water starts to hit, let's say 70 degrees, 75 degrees, and it starts to warm up throughout the summer months, you get that hot surface temp. The shallow waters are extremely hot for some of these fish. You will get some of your larger bass to sit inside cover underneath docks, but your high percentage fish, if you're a tournament angler, you're going to want to be able to focus on deep water and fish it well to get your what you call your money fish, where you're going to get three pounders, three and a half pounders, your 18, 19 inch fish will school up on these deeper transition areas, deeper weed lines. Let's talk about some of the more effective ways to target them. For starters, jig worm. This happens to be just a very simple mushroom style jig head. This happens to be an all-terrain mighty jig. There's many different brands out there. Gopher makes a great mushroom head. Gamagatsu, you could go down the list of them all. I prefer this one mainly because it's a strong hook, a lot of hook gap, hooking percentage, and the price point's great. So I use that mighty jig and they come in a variety of different colors. Again, you can match the color to the jig presentation or plastic presentation you're using. But for me, color is not the most important. I like the color of the plastic more than the color of the jig head. You can use plain silver or lead color. That's fine with me. So that's your jig head, and it's an exposed hook. So, of course, you're not going to fish this in a very heavy cover. You're not going to fish an exposed hook right in the middle of the milfoil Minnetonka. You want to maybe hit the weed edges, so maybe you're ticking milfoil on the bottom, because when it gets really hot, they will use the deepest weed line, oftentimes where there's a transition from weed to hard bottom. So if you've got a milfoil point and there's some rock or rubble on the tip of it, mark that spot in your GPS and target that both for your bass and your walleyes and even some of your larger sunfish. So that's where this type of hook really shines because you have a lot of contact with the bottom. You got better hooking percentage because the hook is exposed and you're not hooking it back through for a weedless application. So if you can get away with an exposed hook, I highly recommend it. And all I've done here is I've taken that ever popular five inch Mr. Twister Kamita. I bit about an inch off the head and you can see it's just a smaller pro profile get more of an aggression bite. And the reason I fish a lot of these smaller baits, especially on pressure waters like Minnetonka, White Bear Lake, Forest Lake, wherever you might be fishing, is that the fish are seeing a lot of different applications. They might be finicky, they might have been caught by other tournament anglers. Whatever it may be, I seem to get a better reaction out of this smaller profile bait. You can always start large and then downsize if you're getting tight little taps and those sorts of things. But that's one application and that's gonna fish relatively fast. So if you're gonna use fluorocarbon line, or a thin braid, it's gonna drop quick. There's nothing really to slow it down. These Kamitas are already weighted. As we know, if you drop them in the water, <clears throat> excuse me, they will sink. So that's a good application for outside weed lines, especially if you're just getting into it. But again, remember, are you fishing in heavy weeds or are you fishing in some of the open water, depending on the exposed hook? So that's one option that I prefer. And you can use that same jig head for a variety of different presentations in terms of plastic choice. You can use it for you know, just the classic phenom worm or the thunder worm from Mr. Twister. They both work exceptionally well. The ribbon tail, you can use it for the new baits we talked about recently, about the pocket series, whether it's the pocket phenom, the pocket paddle tail. That type of jig head will work well for all those. And both of these new baits, the pocket series, are smaller profile. No need to nip them down, hook them on there, drop them down. Great application for outside weed lines. As you can tell, I like a lot of watermelons and darker pumpkins and those sorts of colors. I do exceptionally well. Oftentimes the color that catches the angler on the shelf because it's bright, flashy, gaudy, doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be the best color for catching fish. So for me, more naturals, your Bama bugs, your maybe even some of your June bugs, California 420s, you know, watermelon red flake, watermelon seed pumpkin, all those sorts of baits work exceptionally well. So that jig head works good for that application. 
you're going to do more of a weedless approach, I mentioned this jig before and it still works exceptionally well for me. It's the shaky jig from Tidal Shot. And all this is is just a thin wire hook. It's a finesse application, but it allows you to fish your jig worm weedless. Very effective. It's got a prong system where you poke that in there, and I'll show a picture of that as we, we go in and you'll see. As I open this up, it's got just a little dangly thing there. That's where you poke your worm in, and I'll rig one real quick here for the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. This just happens to be a Mr. Twister Thunder Worm. So that prong that sticks out, you're going to shove that through the head of the plastic, and that's what's going to basically hold the plastic onto the hook. And it actually holds on there pretty well. You can catch quite a few fish. And then just like we showed you in the rigging technique, you're going to poke that through. You can see that's your desired action. So the hook point has gone through the plastic and then poked back through to keep it weedless. And there you go, you got your weedless application. This works very well on, let's say more dense weeds where you're gonna have a little more cover. You're gonna pitch into pockets, maybe around docks, that sorts of things. And that's very well. Thin wire hook, very effective. Considered maybe a finesse application, but also works well because they come in various weights for outside weed line fishing too. So for me, those are my two number one jig worm presentations for bass fishing. And when it comes to walleyes, a lot of times my outside weed lines, I'll use some of the same tactics, but often downsize. I'll use the lightest weight I can get away with because those walleyes will pick it up. They're not often, oftentimes aggressively hitting baits in the outside weed lines, especially in the hot summer. So I'm gonna jig for some of those fish. I'm gonna use a thin wire hook, maybe something more like a sashi shad, like a Mr. Twister sashi shad to imitate more of a minnow bait. Or you can tip it with a leech, a live minnow, a chunk of night crawler, whatever it might be. Only problem with night crawlers I find out on many lakes I fish, once you put that crawler on there, you just drew in a pile of dinky little baby sunfish. It's nothing but a headache rebaiting. So that's where I tend to go to an artificial presentation. So the same setup, just like I showed you here for bass, your jig worm type stuff, that pocket phenom worm, the new one we just showed you and the one we talked about a few weeks back, phenomenal jigging application for walleyes too. So outside weed line, you want to be focusing on some of these jig worm tactics, tactics, probably the most easy way to catch bass and your larger walleyes in the summer months is to get down quickly, get down efficient, and fish these jig worms. So again, we talked about places where the fish are going to be. Transition areas. A transition area, again, as we talked about, is going to be where two bottom contents change. Where weeds meet hard bottom, weeds meet rock, whatever it might be. So on these lakes, we're fishing lots of weeds. Every weed point, every weed line is not the same. Cruise around till you find hard bottom on your locator. Mark that transition area. Come back through and fish that. Make sure you keep contact with the bottom because that's where the fish are. That's where the coolest water is. That's where the bait fish is. That's where they're going to ambush your bait when you drop it in front of their face. So those transition lines are very, very important. As far as gear tactics go, the mighty jig with that cutoff Kamita I showed you, I have that rigged on an actual Thorn Brothers Predator Series rod. This is a custom rod, the nice thing about Thorn Brothers custom rod and tackle in Blaine, Minnesota, is that you can call, get a rod built to your specifications. This is exactly designed for jig worm applications. It's a 7-2 medium action rod, quick tip, and the reason I like that is because I have a lot of sensitivity. I can set the hook very efficiently. And the spinning rod is nice because if I want to downsize to a lighter presentation, I'm not messing with wind with a bait caster, and I have more control no matter what direction I want to cast. And when I'm guiding a lot of clients, it's nice to be able to fish with both hands. So no matter where I'm positioned in the boat, I can cast, let the client use the rod, whatever it might be. So the spinning rod set to me seems to work the best. I happen to be spoiled. I put titanium guides on this to keep the rod very lightweight. And then I have a spinning rod handle, like you said. This is, happens to be a split grip. That's more cosmetics, personal preference. I like how they feel. And then I got that new Shimano Stratic CI4. It's been out for a couple years. It's a magnesium reel, very lightweight. It's a 2500 series. It can spool up a bunch of line if you want to cast long distance. And I happen to have a 10 pound braid on here. The reason I use braid primarily is because of the bodies of water I'm fishing. I'm dealing with pike, muskies, two three critters. So I like the braid, it also cuts through the weeds better. So if I snag up on weeds, I can rip it through a lot easier. I'm not breaking off jigs left and right using monofilament or fluorocarbon. But that being said, you can definitely use a mono or fluorocarbon. That new Pro Elite stuff from Vicious, that fluorocarbon line will work exceptionally well. Like I said, this is just a 10 pound Vicious braid. Works very well for hanging that jig. Braid gives you tons of sensitivity. You can feel the bite, feel the ticks on the rocks very well. And when I set the hook, there's no give. It's a solid hook set. 
helps me land a lot more fish. So whether I'm fishing shallow cover, deep cover, I'm using this braid setup with that jig worm. But especially for the deeper applications where I want to feel the bottom, braid's nice for sensitivity. So that's one setup I've been using. Another setup I use on a regular basis is a Shimano Crucial. And this is a 7.6 drop shot rod. And this is like more of a medium, medium light tip. You can see that tip section is very, very whippy. And the reason I like that is if I'm gonna fish a very light hook or a light jig, or if I got more wind, I can get a little more feel in the action on the bait when I'm fishing the bottom. And this set, like I said, 7.6, medium light, medium heavy drop shot rod. It can also be just a standard medium or medium light rod. It doesn't have to be the drop shot series. And I got a 2500 Stratic. Again, it can spool a bunch of line. I got 20 pound braid on something like this just because I oftentimes maybe flip it around shallow cover too. It's more of a versatile presentation. So if you go with two options, one with 20 pound braid, one with 10 pound braid or eight or 10 pound monofilament, and these two medium to medium light setups for jig worms, you're pretty well covered for a lot of your outside weed line bass fishing. You can use some of the exact same setup for walleyes. Some walleye guys, depending on how you're fishing, if you're gonna be right over the side of the boat, a shorter six foot rod might be more efficient. You have more control, more sensitivity if you're not casting. So if you're just fishing vertically, shorter rod, casting longer rod gives you castability and control on a longer cast. So those are my primary setups for fishing, these type of feet, uh, fish situations. So we talked about jig worms, how you're gonna effectively fish those. We talked about some of the rod and reel setups, locational patterns. Again, find deep water, cooler water. Don't be afraid to take your Vexilar depth therm. What it is, it's a mobile device that allows you to check the water temperature. It's weighted, you can tie it on a string and drop it down. The water temperature in the surface is not uniform to what's down below. So make sure you're checking those water temps below to see where these fish are. You can find a variance as little as one or two degrees. Let's say you're running 15, 20 feet of water, all of a sudden there's a little bit warm, cooler water. Sometimes rocks do that. The harder bottom will attract cooler water. So that's where some of the fish are gonna be. So pay attention to your graph, pay attention to your Vexlar depth therm, pay attention to water temperatures, all those sorts of things and try and catch some of those fish. So be very effective on the water, find that hard bottom transition, use some of these techniques to catch your summertime bass, and we'll have a lot of fun out there. So thanks for watching this episode. This is Matt Johnson with Tech Talk, and we'll catch you next time.